you can classify the CSP system or the solar thermal systems into primary three types. So you have these uh, towers, right, which are these small, small, uh, not small, but you know these mirrors which are all projecting the light uh, onto one central tower. The other ones are these uh, troughs, so you have these parabolic dishes, and these are concentrating the light to this pipe running at the focal point of this uh, parabolic mirror. And uh, a version of that same trough is instead of having this big mirror, you can break it down into these uh, small mirrors, and you can make a Fresnel system. So instead of having a big parabola, you have these small uh, mirrors, which equivalently give you the same uh, concentration. And the third system is the is the dish where you have this uh, you know this uh, dish which is moving in both directions and it's uh, keeping track of the sun. Similar to the dish we saw for uh, concentrated uh, photovoltaic or these multi junction cells. So these things they differ in terms of trapping and they differ in terms of the concentration that they can deliver. So. This is what I'm showing uh, in this chart over here. So this uh, para this parabolic row, it essentially uh, it is fixed in one direction. So it's fixed. It's usually placed north to south, and it tracks east to west. It tracks the sun uh, every day. It can get concentration uh, of up to 30 to 40, and uh, uh, you know it has focal lengths of around three or four meters. So it's the whole thing is around five six meters. Then and its focus at the center. Then you have these towers, which are essentially the receiver is placed uh, on the tower. And you have these small, small mirrors, which are not small, but you know, these individual mirrors, which are essentially reflecting the sunlight onto this uh, receiver. And these, uh, essentially, these, uh, these uh, small mirrors, they track the sun in both directions, both in azimuthal and the elevation direction. And they can; these things can get uh, concentrations uh, up to maximum up to around 800 on this receiver. And they have, you know, large focal lengths as well. So you know, the, these towers can be 100 or 150 or 200 meters high because these things have high focal length. Then the third system, which achieves the highest concentration among them, is essentially using this disk and uh, uh, using this, uh, you know, using this. Uh, parabolic uh, disk, which is 3D in shape. So this is, you know, you can equate it 1D, 2D, 3D. So this is this again tracks in both the direction, both azimuthal and uh, elevation. And these are, you know, the same size as what we saw for uh, multi-junction solar cells, around four, five, six meter in diameter. And they can achieve concentrations up up to you know, 3,000. So now let me ask you, uh, um, looking at these uh, things, concentration number, what do you think which will ach achieve the highest efficiency among these three systems? Solar thermal systems. Solar thermal systems. Why is that? Okay, so higher concentration will result in, in this case, into what? Okay, so you're saying higher concentration results in higher efficiency, and why is that? Okay, so you. You're talking in terms of solar cells. There is no solar cell over here. There is no. It's heating up the the receiver, which is flowing a fluid through it. Maybe water, sometimes molten salt, or you know something else. But there's no. There's nothing electrical. You know, there's no semiconductor in the system. In fact, a lot of people, that's why they don't teach this in a semiconductor class because there's no element of semiconductor involved. So if this does succeed, it will you know, throw them out of the job market. But still, it's, it's very important to learn. But your answer is correct. So you know, just to rephrase the question, we are, I'm showing these three systems which have uh, 
which are used in the solar thermal space or the concentrated uh, solar power space and we are so this disk achieves the highest concentration then the tower and then the trough so we were discussing which one will have the highest efficiency JP what is So you're thinking, yeah, you're thinking along the, the right line. Higher concentration means higher temperature of the water, right? Water or whatever molten salt, whichever thing I'm flowing uh, in this. So higher temperature of the water is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? Try to remember what we discussed in terms of you know the limits that we discussed, right? Limits of thermodynamic conversion, Carnot cycle, right? Okay, so you are a mechanical engineer, right? So what do you think? Yeah. So higher, higher constant. Uh, yeah. So higher. If I, if I think of you know in term, if I think of efficiency, as essentially, like you said, in terms of. You know, the temperature of the hot body and the temperature of my turbine, right? The harder my water, the more efficient is my turbine, right? So, a way, I mean, a general rule of thumb is higher your concentration, whether it's a photovoltaic system or whether it's a solar thermal system, the better is your efficiency of conversion. Another analogy to think of it is, you know, think of this as in terms of entropy. So your sunlight is in all direction, right? Whenever you're concentrating it, you're making it more directional, or you're making it more less random, right? So it's essentially you're decreasing the entropy in the system. So whenever you increase concentration, you're decreasing the entropy. And when you do the conversion into either heat or electricity, it would be more efficient. So in general, higher the concentration, better is your efficiency. It doesn't matter whether it's a photovoltaic system or it's a thermo, a solar thermal system. So these are again the temperature that uh, these different systems achieve. So a dish, you know, it has the highest concentration. So at the receiver, it goes up, you know, all the way up to uh, thousand to three thousand uh, degrees centigrade. And again, it, the temperature depends upon how fast you are circulating the liquid in it. Uh, the more quickly you remove the heat out, it will remain at a lower temperature. If you um, if you let it just stand, it will melt out, and you know, bad things can happen. Uh, the line system which has the lowest, this parabolic trough which has the lowest concentration, so it can achieve temperatures of up to 350 or 400. The tower, it gets uh, up to, it gets up to around 500, 600, 700, that's the uh, uh, temperature they run the liquid at. And these, if instead of using one t parabolic dish, if you're breaking it down into these Fresnel small lenses, then it achieves again a temperature similar to that of a, of a parabolic trough. So there are a lot of uh, companies, you know, which install this. Uh, if you're in a semiconductor space, you might have not heard of them, but they are all existing, and you know, I'm listing them over here. A lot of these, uh, especially the companies which make the tower, which looks the fanciest, a lot of these companies are all uh, Spanish. So there is uh, uh, Axiona, there is Abangua, Abangua, and you know, there's Azura, so these are, you know, if, if you're planning to install a, a, a solar thermal tower, it might be a good idea to you know, learn some Spanish. You'll have to be dealing with these people a lot. And I'll, I'll come to the point why most of these companies which make these towers are, are Spanish. Okay. <coughs> so this is something we already discussed that uh, if you want, uh, you know, if you want a higher e efficiency uh, of your uh, of converting your uh, your uh, your uh, heated uh, liquid into uh, into electricity using a turbine. Again, using just by looking at the Carnot efficiency limit, the higher is the temperature of the water, the better is your efficiency. Right. So, 
doesn't matter how you are obtaining it, but if you just can somehow heat it more, the better would be your reaction. Right. So, but there's a there's a catch over here. So the Carnot cycle says that the higher is the temperature, the better is the efficiency. Right. But these things which are absorbing this uh, absorbing this uh, sunlight, the receiver which is running through the center or the focal point of this parabolic mirror, or that point thing which is sitting at the center of the tower, it's a black body, right? It's it's essentially absorbing its uh, it's absorbing the sunlight. But in the in the process, it's also heating up, right? So the temperature of it already lies. And we saw that for a disk, it can go up to a thousand. For a tower, it goes up to it's operated around 500, 600, right? And uh, the linear trough, it was around 300 degrees centigrade. So the temperature on this thing is high, so it will emit out black body radiation. And we all studied about black body radiation in problem set one, right? So it depends upon the area, it depends upon the emissivity, and it depends upon the fourth power of your temperature, right? So now looking at this looking at this equation, right? I want to minimize the radiation. I want to absorb all the light, but I don't want to emit any of it out, right? So how do I do that? Just looking at this equation, what what all I can play with? So the first thing I can play with essentially is the receiver area, right? So I can make it a very small receiver, right? And I can make it like a tiny receiver, it receives all the sunlight. The problem with that is, you know, if you concentrate light to that, there will be birds flying by, right, in this tower, and bad things can happen to those things, right? Or even just getting a material which is that small and can absorb that much sunlight is is a is again a challenge. What I can do is play with the emissivity, right? So I can make the emissivity. I can engineer the emissivity such that it does not uh, it does not radiate, right? But that emissivity and absorptivity are essentially the you know the same thing, right? So em lower emissivity means lower absorptivity. Right? If I reduce the emissivity, it's going to stop absorbing. Uh, it's going to be becoming it's 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 going to start becoming less efficient absorber, right? right? So you see the the conundrum over here. So there's a this is an engineering problem, and you know this is where it it gets interesting, and I get excited about it. So how should I design, you know, how should I design this receptor? So that's so let me you know ask you. So if I if I show you one of these receptor, would it look black or would it look white? Would it look like a stainless steel, which has very high emissivity and absorbability, or would it look like a you know, piece of graphite, which has very low absorptivity and low emissivity? You agree with black? some of the captions here and <coughs> then you're saying that it basically so this is based this figure is plotting the the black body radiation at different temperatures right so I have mentioned that the receiver heats up to maximum around thousand uh, you know thousand K or thousand degrees centigrade so what what range does that lie in right thousand if you look at the peak the wheels law which you used in uh, your First problem set that peak, which corresponds to uh, thousand k, is still is still in the infrared, right? So in the visible, what should be the emissivity? Should it be low or should it be high?
should it be high or should it be low? I mean, would it appear black or would it appear white? So visible is usually here, right? Visible spectrum is here. Blue is over here, right? Your green is here. Your red is here, right? So in this region, what should be its energy? seems to be some confusion. Are you, are you guys getting it? But I'm asking you. Yeah. So basically in this region, it has to have no emissivity, right? Where it's, it's basically acting as a black body, right? But in this region where it's trying to absorb the light, light from the sun, it should have a very high emissivity or absorptivity, right? So ideally, I would want it to behave its curve of, you know, if I'm plotting emissivity as a function of wavelength, I would want it to be like this, right? Are you getting it? Like this is one, right? A hundred percent, and this is zero percent. So this would be my ideal ideal receiver emissivity. You guys agree with this or it it doesn't have to be step, it could be like this as well. But I'm saying in an ideal world if I want you know I want hundred percent efficiency in the range of the solar spectrum, but I want zero percent emissivity in the in the range which is outside the solar spectrum. Right, so it, it's basically a very good absorber when it's hot. So it's a very good absorber and emitter when it's uh, when it's when when it, when the temperature is equal to the temperature of the sun, right? And when the temperature is equal to the temperature of what it heats up to, right? It heats up to 300, 400, 500 C. In that range, it should be essentially very low, right? So. It it looks like you know it's it's complete. It, if you look at these ones, the 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 way you ideally want to design is is exactly like this. But in reality, you get something like this, where again it uh, it looks like uh, you know it. So basically, it, for example, this consists of these uh, copper pipes, which are uh, which are very high emissivity, and then you're coating it with this layer, which looks like you know it has made it black. So. It looks like a very good, uh, you know, uh, it, when you look at it in the daylight, it looks like black, right? completely black. So is that argument clear? I mean, ideally, you want this to be like a step function, and this is what you get by using this engineering. So engineering the uh, engineering the river emissivity of your receptor is, you know, it's quite interesting. So you want it to be. Uh, absorbing in some range, you want it to be non-absorbing in other range of wavelengths. <coughs> so this is your solar spectrum. So in this range, right, you want it to absorb, and in this range, you don't want it to absorb. Meaning you don't want it to emit at all. 